Thank you very much. Uh, it's really a great, great pleasure for me to be here. Uh, I know that saturated fat continue to be a contentious uh, topic. Uh, in fact, the media has been saturated with saturated fat <laughs> in, in the past two years. Uh, I'm going to desaturate uh, if I can. <laughs> Um, so I have a, a bit complicated uh, title because I, I, I don't think it's really meaningful to talk about saturated fat without talking about the replacement nutrient because we, we don't eat saturated fat in isolation, right? So that's the reason we have to uh, uh, specify what kind of macronutrient we're going to replace saturated fat if you're, if you're going to cut back on, on saturated fat intake. I think everyone knows that uh, those are the major type of fats in, in our diet. Most of the saturated fat come from uh, dairy uh, and meats. Uh, Plant-based monounsaturated fats or MUFA come, primarily come from olive oil, avocados and nuts, and PUFA uh, mostly come from, also from vegetable oils, um, uh, nuts, seeds, and, and, and seafood. But saturated fat is not just one class of fat. Uh, it's actually a, a, a whole array of different classes of saturated fat, from medium chain saturates to long chain saturates to odd chain saturates to very long chain saturates, and they all come from uh, different food sources. But most of the saturated fats in our food supply are long chain saturates: uh, lauric acid, muric acid, gasic, uh, palmitic acid, and, and stearic acid. And most of those long chain saturates uh, come from animal products, especially. Uh, meats and, and dairy, of course. Uh, if you like dark chocolate, uh, the good news is that uh, stearic acid doesn't appear to increase LDL cholesterol, but other long chain saturates, uh, like 12, 14, and 16, uh, increase LDL cholesterol. And we also get some uh, medium chain saturates uh, from uh, coconut oil and, and, and dairy products. And the ruminant fats uh, do contain some um, small amount of odd chain uh, saturates, 15O and, and 17O. We also get uh, a small amount of very long chain saturates, like 20, 22, or 24 from uh, macadamia nuts and, and peanuts and canola oil. So as you know, uh, it, it, almost two years ago, uh, Annals Internal Medicine published this meta-analysis uh, showing that uh, 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 consumption of saturated fat is not associated with uh, cardiovascular disease, and the conclusion was that uh, uh, cur current evidence does not support cardiovascular guidelines that encourage high consumption of PUFA and a low consumption of saturated fat, and that paper has led to all those uh, sensational headlines, eat butter, and butter is back, and, and so on and so forth. Um, but the main problem with this meta-analysis is that it doesn't really specify the replacement nutrient, because when you cut back on saturated fat intake, uh, the uh, effects of that replacement, uh, what kind of uh, macronutrient replacement, make a huge difference uh, in, in terms of health outcomes. Uh, as David Jenkins mentioned, if you replace saturated fat with bad carbohydrates, it's not going to do you any good. But if you replace saturated fat with uh, uh, unsaturated fats and perhaps good carbohydrates, uh, you, you, you will improve your cardiovascular health. So that's the uh, hypothesis we wanted to test in a recent paper. Uh, specifically, we compare saturated fat to unsaturated fats and different sources of carbohydrates in relation to coronary heart disease risk in our two large cohort studies. And uh, those are the uh, main results. Uh, uh, it, here, we look at the um, effects of uh, replacing uh, saturated fat with uh, different type of fats and different type of carbohydrates. So if you replace saturated fat with trans fat, of course, that's really bad. <laughs> so it actually increases your heart disease risk even though it was not significant. However, if you replace saturated fat with uh, healthy fats, especially uh, PUFA, uh, your risk of CHD was significantly reduced. In terms of carbohydrates, if you replace saturated fat with uh, carbohydrates from refined starches and and the sugars, uh, there is no increase or decrease risk. So it means that high saturated fat diets and uh, uh, high uh, refined carbohydrate diets are equally bad. Uh, on the other hand, if you replace saturated fat with good carbohydrates, like whole grains, you will see uh, a moderate reduction in CHD risk. Uh, from a, a different perspective, so um, if you um, uh, use saturated fat to replace other uh, macronutrients in your diet, what, what, what will happen? So if, if you 
replace uh, uh, trans fat with saturated fat. Um, that's actually a good thing because trans fat is just the worst type of fat, right? Uh, however, if you replace good fats, uh, like MUFA or PUFA with saturated fat, the risk will go up. So that's not a good thing. Uh, if you replace uh, 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 whole grains, good carbohydrates with saturated fat, that's not good either. So again, I think uh, this really underscores the importance of looking at the type of fats, the type of carbohydrates uh, when we talk about uh, uh, the, the effects of reducing or increasing saturated fat intake in our diet. So our conclusion is pretty straightforward. Uh, our observations, uh, together with evidence from previous studies, indicate that uh, uh, recommendations to reduce saturated fat intake should specify replacing um, saturates with unsaturates and uh, high quality carbohydrates. So uh, there recently have been uh, uh, quite a few headlines about dairy fat, uh, eating more um, cheese, eating more uh, full fat uh, milk. Uh, so w w do we have evidence to support uh, this kind of uh, claims? So uh, dairy fat is actually mostly saturates. 60% uh, of dairy fat are saturates, and uh, mostly long chain saturates, lauric acid, myristic acid, palmitic acid. And we know that those saturates increase total in the LDL cholesterol. But dairy fat also uh, uh, contains a small amount of uh, ruminant fat, uh, 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 some uh, natural uh, trans isomers, like uh, trans 16, 1, and 7, and also a uh, trace amount of R chain. Uh, uh, fat uh, saturates like 15-0 and 17-0. And so those ruminant fats in some studies have been, have been shown to improve metabolic uh, parameters such as reducing triglycerides, reducing uh, uh, insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. So the question is whether we can generalize the effects of those, um, uh, trans, uh, those ruminant fats uh, uh, into uh, the uh, health effects of consuming, uh, consuming dairy products. Uh, so the, recently we did an analysis to actually look at the health effects of dairy, dairy fat in terms of cardiovascular risk. So we compared dairy fat with other animal fat and also compared dairy fat with uh, vegetable sources of fats. So when we compared dairy fat with other animal fats, mostly from meats, they are not very different. So it means that replacing um, other animal fats with dairy fat is, is not associated with either increased or decreased risk of heart disease. However, uh, when you replace dairy fat with vegetable sources of fats, the fats from vegetable oils, from nuts, seeds, uh, and seafood, you actually see a significant reduction in um, CHD, in stroke, and in total cardiovascular disease. So this analysis suggests that the plant-based fats actually uh, more beneficial uh, than dairy fats in terms of uh, reducing risk of uh, CVD. How about coconut oil? This is my favorite topic. How many people here uh, would say coconut oil is su super food? <laughs> Some, okay. Uh, how many people would say this is a super hyper, hype? <laughs> All right, so a lot of people are kind of in between. Uh, you may have heard a lot of claims about coconut oil curing diabetes, curing your HIV, and, uh, uh, <laughs> and curing cancer. Uh, good for your skin. I think that one is probably real. <laughs> um, so the, a lot of those claims are based on reported benefits of medium-chain triglycerides. Uh, coconut oil does contain some medium-chain uh, fatty acids, uh, but relatively small amount, this 8-0, 10 zero is about 10 to 20 percent. Most of the saturates in coconut oil are actually long chain saturates, uh, especially noric acid, myristic acid, and palmitic acid. Even for medium chain saturates, uh, those claims I think are mostly uh, based on very small limited evidence. So I definitely think we need more studies uh, on medium, the health effects of medium chain uh, triglycerides. And of course, co coconut oil cannot be assumed to have the same healthy effects of medium chain triglycerides because it contains mostly uh, long chain saturates, not uh, medium chain saturates. So, uh, uh, the 2015 Dietary Guideline Advisory Committee uh, did an extensive review on 
the relationship between saturated fat and the cardiovascular disease, I, I was very privileged to be part of the committee, and we spent two and a half years uh, reviewing and synthesizing evidence from hundreds and thousands of papers. Uh, this is uh, our conclusion on, on saturated fat. So there is strong evidence from uh, observational studies, clinical trials that uh, replacing saturated fat with unsaturated fat, especially PUFAS, reduce LDL cholesterol and uh, CBD risk. Uh, there is also strong evidence that replacing saturated fat with overall carbohydrates does not lower CBD risk. So here, uh, it means that uh, it implies that the conventional low-fat, high-carbohydrate diet is not beneficial because when people reduce their saturated fat intake, they just eat more white bread, bagels, and, and, and those kind of unhealthy carbohydrates. So this uh, type of approach is not beneficial for reducing CHD, CVD risk. And the committee recommends low, uh, retaining the 10% up limit for, for saturated fat. So people have been asking why 10%, why not 5%, why not uh, 11%. Um, so those are the, uh, the amount of uh, calories uh, from saturated fat in, in several established healthy diets. We have Pratimed, we have DASH, Omni Heart, Leon Diet Heart Study, the healthy U.S. pattern, the healthy vegetarian pattern. They're all below 10%. And 10% um, uh, of course is a bit arbitrary, uh, but I think it's a, it's a reasonable uh, uh, kind of middle ground because it's, it, it, it's not really practical for the population to reduce uh, their the current saturated fat intake to like five or six percent. There is no scientific evidence to support such lower amount. And also 10 percent would allow a lot of the flexibilities to include uh, some healthy foods which does uh, uh, do in uh, contain some saturated fat, for, for example peanuts have 10 percent or maybe 15 percent saturated fat. And then another question is uh, why the committee still talk about nutrients. Uh, and uh, uh, the committee is fully cognizant uh, of the interconnections among dietary patterns, foods, and, and nutrients. Um, so the, uh, the primary recommendations uh, are based on foods and, and patterns. However, uh, our report uh, doesn't ignore some important nutrients, especially the nutrients may be uh, a mark of uh, diet quality. For example, uh, added sugar, saturated fat, and, and, and sodium. So here, uh, just a quick question. How many of you think apple is healthy? Everyone, right? How many of you think uh, apple pie is healthy? Or can be healthy? <laughs> can be healthy, right? So, so, so whether apple pie, which is made from apples, whether it's going to be healthy or not, it really depends on uh, what kind of things you're going to put in the apple pie, right? If you use the uh, uh, recipe download online, you will put a half pound of sugar and one quarter pound of butter, and then that's a typical apple pie Americans eat. Uh, but if you use a minimal amount of butter just for flavor and a small amount of sugar, uh, just for taste, and then the apple pie could be as healthy as uh, apples. So, so that's the reason it's really important to uh, have an upper limit, have recommendations on uh, those things that can be added to the food supply to uh, prepared foods or, or packaged foods. Uh, same story for pizza and, uh, and the cheese, of course. So what's new in the 2015 DGSA report? That's my own list. I, I know uh, Steve Abram, another member here, he may have a different list. So first of all, uh, it's focused on overall dietary patterns rather than individual nutrients. We emphasize one size doesn't fit all. It's on uh, upper limit uh, total fat, uh, emphasizing type of fat more important than total amount of fat, maintaining 10% upper limit for saturated fat. It doesn't carry forward the upper limit uh, on dietary cholesterol. It means that moderate egg consumption can be included as part of a healthy diet, uh, considered uh, the environmental impact of uh, our diet recommending reducing red meat for the health of both humans and planet. And the first time said the 10 percent upper limit on added sugar it retains 23 milligram per day of sodium. And uh, coffee uh, is recommended uh, as part of a healthy diet. So it's the most exciting news for, <laughs> for the general public. Uh, and there's still a lot of buzz about coffee today because we just published a paper yesterday in circulation showing that regular consumption of coffee is actually associated with decreased risk of total mortality and the cost-specific mortality. Uh, 
And then farm raised in wild caught seafood uh, contain uh, equal uh, amount of omega-3. So uh, to some degree, uh, the farm raised uh, fish can be used as alternative to wild caught uh, uh, seafood. And finally, it really emphasized creation and promotion uh, this culture of health. Uh, I think this is a very important concept uh, through which healthy foods, healthy choices should be made accessible, affordable, and normative. And uh, many of those recommendations do not sit very well with the meat industry, as, as you know. Uh, they have been attacking which, uh, vicious attacks on, on the report. And the Congress uh, has already said to us, don't talk about the environment. And now uh, um, the secretaries of HHS and the USDA have already uh, giving in, cave in to the political pressure from Congress, which is very unfortunate. But I think uh, the majority of uh, recommendations will stand because the, those recommendations for environmental sustainability are the same as the uh, uh, recommendations for improving our health. So I think that's really uh, uh, good news. And that's my final slides. I, I hope uh, uh, this can be used as a kind of a base for c creating common ground. Uh, so we're talking about uh, healthy fats and the healthy carbohydrates in the um, uh, uh, overall healthy eating pattern. We shouldn't talk about just fat, uh, low fat, high fat, or low carb or high carb. We really need to talk about types and the quality of fats and, and carbohydrates. Trans fat should not be, uh, artificial trans fat should not be included in any healthy dietary pattern at all. And we w also should shift our dietary pattern from the right to the left have more uh, unsaturated fats, healthy fats, more healthy uh, uh, carbohydrates, and more fruits and vegetables. And, and uh, the DGAC report emphasized that healthy dietary patterns can be achieved in many ways and should be tailored to individuals' food and cultural preferences and the health conditions. So that's the reason we have a uh, healthy Mediterranean diet, healthy vegetarian diet, a healthy U.S. pattern, and a healthy uh, marking pattern, and so on and so forth. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.